appreciate how powerful the Salah is for someone that is watching it or witnessing it for the first time. And, you know, there are many things to admire about the Salah, about the way that we pray uh, that people will mention. Uh, often they'll mention how orderly it is, right? Or how uh, uniform it is across the world, right? That the people come together and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this uh, Salah in the same way around the world. Or they'll comment on the rows being assembled in the Kaaba and how miraculous that is. But there is one element of the Salah, of the prayer, uh, the beauty of which is often uh, not appreciated. And uh, it cannot fully be appreciated. And of course, it's the central part of the Salah. It's the sujood. It is the prostration. And you know, when I did the, the last 10 nights of Ramadan, uh, Ibadul Rahman, uh, the servants of the Most Merciful, um, I, I talked about, sujjadan wa qiyama, right? Why Allah puts sajda, why Allah puts prostration before even standing up in prayer. And I wanted to share this story. Uh, it was subhanAllah, a brother that embraced Islam just about a month before the shutdown. So this was either late January or early February. And I had a conversation with him today, which uh, particularly makes me want to share this story. So he came to attend um, a lecture at the masjid. And after the lecture, he stayed for Salat al-Isha. He watched the Isha prayer. And after the Isha prayer, I looked at his face and I could just tell that he was so moved by the Isha prayer. And subhanAllah, I went to him and I spoke to him and, um, you know, we, we sat and talked and, and his first words were, he said, that prostration, what do you call that? Uh, what's the, what, how, do you, how do you refer to that prostration that you all were doing? And I said, it's called sujood. And I said, actually, masjid means a place of sujood, place of prostration. And he's a brother that's well versed in the Bible. So he goes, I wonder why we don't do that anymore. And I said, well, what do you mean? And I, I wanted him to elaborate. So he said, you know, uh, I, I read about Jesus, peace be upon him, prostrating. I wonder why we don't prostrate anymore the way that uh, the way that you were prostrating. How come we don't prostrate? And as he said that, you know, um, you could tell that the tears were starting to come down his eyes. And, you know, we talked for a bit after that. And he said, uh, can you lead me in a prayer? Can, can we pray together? So I told him, well, you know, uh, sure, I'll, I'll show you how to pray and you can follow along. And um, we went into the sujood and, um, you know, he he immediately, as he went into the sujood, he started to, uh, you know, to cry quite a bit. So anyway, alhamdulillah, that night he actually did embrace Islam. And, um, you know, today as I was uh, speaking to him, I asked him how he was doing. And he said, alhamdulillah, still upon sajda, <laughs> still upon prostration, which is the first time I'd actually ever heard that expression. And subhanAllah, you know, with that, I just wanted to share this reflection of the beauty of sajda that's often lost. It is the act that a person becomes closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu said the closest that a person becomes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when they are in sujood, is when, when they are in prostration. He also told Rabi'a ibn Ka'b al-Aslami radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when Rabi'a asked the Prophet ﷺ how he could have his companionship, and the Prophet ﷺ told him to assist him by frequently making sujood, by frequently prostrating. And so in this world, the closest you are to God, the closest you are to Allah is when you fall on your face in sajda and prostration. And the closest that you are to the Prophet, peace be upon him, in paradise is in accordance with how frequently you were close to Allah in sajda in this world. And so there's a connection there. There's also something about the uh, singularity, or, or not that it's the only solution, but that sajda is a place that you go to. Sujood is a place that you go to, whether it's out of shukur or out of sabr or out of tawbah. Uh, it's a place that you go to for gratitude. It's a place that you go to for patience. Uh, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance, to ask Allah for help, uh, to shed your, your pain, right? To grieve to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sujood. How many prophets spent so much of their lives on their faces in prayer, grieving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? It's, it's how you release your burden. You put your face on the ground and the, the burden starts to come out of you and is, and is uh, completely removed. Uh, from you as you grieve to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a place of tawbah, which is of course how we grieve for our sins. And we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tawbah, in sajda, in repentance. And we, uh, you know, we, we take uh, an oath to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to never return back to uh, those sins. 
And if you were to walk into a masjid and you see two people making sujood and prolonging their sajda, you would not know why that person is prolonging their sajda. It's such a private, beautiful conversation between a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially in the nawafid and the voluntary prayers, it's a time for duha, a time for supplication, where you can uh, uh, take everything from your heart, everything from your mind, and put it into that sajda, in that communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I just wanted to um, to just just share that because I think we do lose sight of how beautiful the sajda is. And with that, actually, inshallah ta'ala, um, you might have seen, uh, alhamdulillah, Sheikh Abdullah Uduru's uh, uh, basics series has been coming out now uh, where he's going to cover the five pillars. And I think that it's important for us to not just understand these pillars, but to understand uh, some of what they represent. And I think that those of us who may have grown up on uh, sajda, alhamdulillah, uh, we, we lose sight of how beautiful and profound it is. And um, I could go on and on about, you know, what the sajda means. And inshallah ta'ala, you know, you can go back and check uh, the Ibadul Rahman series, the servants of the most merciful. But uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always make us from as sajideen uh, to make us from those who prostrated. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment that uh, we immediately prostrate when the time comes to be amongst the sajdeen. And sajda is where the dua of the Prophet ﷺ is answered on the Day of Judgment and his shafa'ah and his intercession. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, always on the practice of as sujood, as sujood, as sujood. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to count us amongst the sajdeen and to elevate us on the Day of Judgment uh, through that sujood and to relieve us of our uh, struggles through sujood in this world and to make sujood the most beloved of positions to us and to make our position, our rank high in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because whoever lowers themselves for Allah, Allah elevates them. Wa jazakumullahu khayran wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.